Well, perhaps we should start by saying that cultural goods and military procurement will not be on the table, will not be dealt with in the negotiations, perhaps because the idea of reaching an agreement on, uh, on them, on military procurement and on cultural goods, was regarded as pretty hopeless to begin with. Um, a number of items are regarded as difficult. Regulatory convergence in the financial sector is one of them. Uh, the American regulatory agencies in this sector, in the financial sector, are quite powerful and will not be yielding easily to pressures from Europe uh, where the regulation of banks and insurance companies is not seen in the same light. And just to open a parenthesis here, I would say that um, I believe the number of failures in the banking sector and insurance sector in Europe has been less than in the United States. Um, the financial crisis in the Euro area, this is another reason why uh, it's going to be a tricky issue, a difficult issue. The financial crisis in the Euro area is not really over yet. It's not finished yet. Uh, so that European negotiating positions are not yet very clear. So, so much for the financial sector. There is another, I think, quite tricky question, which is the issue of um, the settlement of, um, of differences between uh, the two parties. Uh, the Americans, <coughs> I beg your pardon, the, the correct English term is this dispute settlement mechanism. Now, the traditional dispute settlement mechanism opposes two countries. Uh, as in most treaties, the, the signatories are the actors. But here, um, in this case, in the case of the TIP, TTIP, the United States would like to introduce something they have already introduced in a number of other bilateral uh, trade treaties and trade and investment treaties with other countries, which is a mechanism by which the investor, not the country, the investor can deal with the country that has hosted his investment because the conditions in which he invested uh, have changed, for instance, for environmental or other reasons. So this is going to be tricky. Uh, not so much that the uh, European investors dislike it. I think that in, in, in a way they would be pretty happy to have this. But um, that if one wants to envisage uh, the extension of this agreement to other countries to make it a multilateral agreement, uh, then one can be sure that there will be strong opposition, strong resistances on the part of uh, less developed countries. So it's tricky if one wants to conceive the treaty as, as to be extended in the second stage to other countries so that it, beca it becomes a multilateral treaty. Um, one or two other things. Um, in, well, in agriculture, there are the traditional difficulties between America and uh, Europe, focusing perhaps somewhat on geographical origin of some European goods. Uh, Europeans want their, the geographical origin of their goods to be respected and defended in the same way as an American brand. And this, is, this does not go down well in the United States. So that will also be a tricky issue. Um, I think that's, th well, yes, perhaps one last point, uh, the question of public procurement. But here we go into the, the, uh, the, the way the Americans see their legal, legal system, which is not always the same as the way Europeans see their legal system. The way Europeans see their legal system, you have a treaty first at the highest point, then you have national law, then you have uh, local authority law, et cetera. Well, in America, it's not always that easy. And the federal government uh, does not always succeed in uh, securing the implementation of uh, provisions that are in treaties, uh, trade treaties, for instance, by the state authorities or by local authorities. And this could be tricky in the case of procurement, of official government procurement. Uh, it will be dealt with, I suppose, pretty easily at federal level, but it will be much more difficult at the state or local authority level.